the wheel of time turns and ages come and go, leaving memories that become legend. Legend fades to myth, and even myth is long forgotten when the age that gave it birth comes again. The Wheel of Time is an interesting first-person shooter developed by Legend Entertainment in 1999. It's interesting in the way that it's based off a series of books written by Robert Jordan. It's interesting because it's one of the first FPS games to have a female protagonist, and also because it's one of the first games aside from the first Unreal game to run on the Unreal Engine. And lastly, arguably, it's one of the best looking games based off that engine as well. Despite having a pretty solid reaction upon release, it's now fallen into obscurity with few gamers I think even knowing that it even exists. Well, seeing as I'm an asshole with nothing better to do, let's delve into this thing and see if that's for better or worse then, shall we? So here's where I'm supposed to pretend like I'm some sort of expert on the Wheel of Time books because I spent 15 minutes reading about the series on Wikipedia, but I'm not going to do that and blow smoke up your ass. Truth of the matter is I'd never heard of these books when I first played this game all those years ago, and even now in 2017, my only connection to the series is from this game alone. Considering the game isn't canon though, I don't think it really matters whether or not you're familiar with the books anyway, as the game does a pretty stellar job of explaining everything. So Robert Jordan fans, just keep those fedoras untipped and your katanas sheathed. Anyway, in the game, your character is Elena, a keeper in the White Tower, and one of a select few people referred to as Aes Sedai, people who can channel the One Power, creating magic with the elements of Earth, Water, Air, Fire, and Spirit. With great power comes great responsibility, as they say, and Elena has a sworn duty to protect her fellow channelers against the Trollocs and other Aes Sedai, who use the One Power for evil purposes, for no real other reason other than they're just a bunch of pricks. Elena's journey begins when a would-be assassin attacks her in the White Tower, looking for two seals to release an entity known as the Dark One, which then propels Elena to hunt down the assassin, forcing herself to become proficient with the usage of Tear Ungrial, which are the spells of the game. Now, this is honestly only really scratching the surface of the amount of lore and backstory on offer here. There's frequent and lengthy cinematics throughout the game that serve as a means to top and tail certain missions, but also explaining aspects and elements of the game or that can't be conveyed through the gameplay. All up, there's around an hour of cinematics in the entire game, with it being about 15 minutes or so of introductory cinematics before you even get into the actual gameplay. An hour might not sound like a lot by today's standards, and when you consider we've had games like Metal Gear Solid that have had cinematics the duration of feature-length films, but for 1999, this kind of thing was really going against the grain. I mean, the game's closest comparison, I'd say, in terms of the style, is a game like Thief the Dark Project, and even then, the longest cinematics in Thief go for no longer than three or four minutes. Wheel of Time is, as I said before, one of the first games to use the Unreal Engine, and I do genuinely think it's one of the better looking ones as well. It's kind of funny looking back at it now, but I can remember to run games like this, you'd need something like a Voodoo 3 card with its whopping 256 megabytes of VRAM to even see the game at a resolution like 800 by 600. Obviously, we don't have that problem anymore, and all things considered, Wheel of Time runs pretty damn smoothly on modern hardware. I mean, I think I only crashed maybe once or twice the entire time. Some of the areas in the game do show their age in terms of the level of detail. The character models, for instance, kind of look like rubbish, which is really par for the course. But the creativity and artistry I still think looks impressive. Architecturally, there's certain areas that just look absolutely stunning, really putting the limited capabilities of the engine to extremely good use. One of the early areas in the game is this creepy abandoned city, which conveys this sense of dread and despair through great sound effects and texture work. And each mission is always different from the last, and some of the areas you visit that break off from the mold throw a real curveball into the mix, sending the player to some bizarre and outlandish locations that are really going to catch you off guard. Gameplay-wise, Wheel of Time functions like your standard first-person shooter. You move around with a mouse and keyboard, exploring somewhat complex, albeit linear levels as you progress through the campaign. Wheel of Time is a great example of basically a bygone era of first-person shooters, where the game drops you into these complex areas and allows you to explore as much as you genuinely want to. Often when you head off the beaten path, you're rewarded with extra items that can make the difference between the game either being challenging or somewhat challenging. But still challenging either way, as this is a game that's really going to test even the most seasoned of gamers, and it's a game that doesn't pull its punches when it comes to its combat and mechanics. There's the odd puzzles here and there, and there's even a mission where you're avoiding environmental traps the entire time, without firing a single shot at an enemy. But the vast majority of this game is combat against one of the various factions of enemies in the game, most of which are humanoid that function similar to how they did in Unreal. Instead of traditional weapons, you've got access to the aforementioned Tear Angrial, which are a bunch of offensive and defensive spells placed throughout the environment for the player to get their inquisitive hands on. 
Now these could be things like basic fireballs, shields, the ability to shift through walls or pick enemies up with a gust of wind and move them around at your own will. Wheel of Time joins the ranks along with games like Requiem Avenging Angel, Jedi Knight and eventually System Shock 2 in allowing players to bugger around with a bunch of cool looking abilities. And like its predecessors, the abilities in Wheel of Time are at least original in concept. The main problems I have come from the balancing, or the lack thereof. For starters, some of the spells are questionably useless in the majority of combat situations. Explosive Ward is by far the most finicky spell. This is one where you place a ward down on the ground, which when run over by enemies detonates doing massive damage. However, the vast majority of environments in this game are really strict with letting you put these things down for no apparent reason. Chain Lightning is another spell that's got a few issues. Now, the way this one works is that it shoots out this constant stream of electricity, but the player has to be within melee range of an enemy before it actually activates. At this point though, you're now in melee range of an enemy, allowing them to just beat the shit out of you. If you're skillful enough, you can hop around, avoiding taking too much damage from them, but the extreme risk you're taking by getting so close to an enemy to use this attack, combined with the absolute piss poor damage the Lightning does, makes it seem very ineffective. On that note of damage, another huge issue with the combat is just how much goddamn damage the enemies can take in this game before going down. The Black Sisters you encounter later in the game use the same spells as Elena, and often you're killed so quickly it's just fucking ludicrous. which wouldn't be as bad if they weren't able to shake attacks off like it's little more than a slap on the bum. Even from some of your more damaging spells, enemies can often soak up to 4 or 5 direct hits before buying the farm. An enemy type later in the game called the White Cloaks can soak up about half a dozen as well and they're extremely fond of rushing the player, making your explosive spells often damage you as much as it does them. And then there's another issue with the White Cloaks in which those equipped with shields can deflect projectiles back at the player, similar to the Centaurs in Hexen. However, in Hexen, the Centaurs would telegraph this block move by taking a position with their shield up. With these White Cloaks, there's no wind-up to let you know whether or not they're going to block an incoming projectile. They're either going to block it, or they're not. So what happens is the way you find out if they're going to block a projectile is usually around the same time they happen to bounce one right back into your face. Now look, you can of course minimize the damage taken from your own deflected attacks if you're on the move, but I still feel it needs some kind of wind up or animation to let the player know when they're entering this state. Then there's a few different kind of shield spells depending on what element you're trying to defend yourself against, and I think this is just needlessly complex. It could have just been the same shield for everything, achieved the same result, and been much easier to come to grips with under pressure. Look at Clive Barker's Undying for instance, a game that shares a lot of similarities with Wheel of Time. Yet with all its different offensive and defensive spells, it still only had one shield type. One shield to rule them all. That's all you need. Other spells I just found very limited in their practicality or were so rare that they honestly might as well not have even been the game. I think most players will go between the fireball, which is kind of like an underpowered rocket launcher, the dart, which you could compare to a machine gun, and the seeker, which is a slow moving homing energy ball that does more damage the longer it takes to home in on enemies. And it's kind of a shame in a sense because a lot of the other spells are really creative visually and also the way they've been implemented into the game. It's just they kind of get edged out by the more workhorse and objectively more useful spells that are going to get the most usage. The real saving grace here I think is that Wheel of Time has quick saves which allows for a high level of experimentation with your abilities as you can just simply load a recent quick save if something didn't pan out the way you expected it to and also because it alleviates a fair bit of the frustration from dying repeatedly. But you know what, even with all these issues though, the spells in this game are far superior to the absolute clusterfuck that was the spell system in Arx Fatalis, another game which again I think shares a lot of similarities with Wheel of Time. And I think all up in this game there's about 40 odd spells to play with, though I must have been doing something wrong because I don't think I even came close to finding half of those. Playing Wheel of Time does expect a fair bit of patience from the player, and I think it's really a product of its time. If you don't get invested in the story, which is fair enough, it is still possible to enjoy the gameplay on some level, as even almost 20 years since its original release, it's still largely playable. I think what's probably the biggest shame is that so few people actually know about this game in the first place. People are going to talk about Unreal, Half-Life and Quake until they bleed from their assholes, but I think few Sunny Jims would have ever heard of this game at all. On top of that, it hasn't really gotten the same kind of love in regards to it still being easy to obtain through sites like goodoldgames.com or available on Steam. Also, the lack of source ports hasn't really helped it either, and getting it running on whatever operating system you're using can often be a roll of the dice. 
but people that make the effort to get into this thing will have a pretty good time. I know I go on and on about the late 90s like some kind of broken record, but it really was the kind of golden age for FPS gaming, when we just had so many great games being released, and at the end of the day, I'd say Wheel of Time definitely earns its slot in those ranks. What was, what will be, and what is, may yet fall under the shadow.